All right, welcome, ah. Anne. Hey, there's Zach. Zach, where are you that there are mosquitoes? Hey, hey, Zach. Can All right, I, I can hear you now. <laughs> where are you that you have mosquitoes? Oh, just on my front porch. There are I know, some. But, but what state? So. Oh, Austin, What's, Texas. Austin, Texas. Yeah. Um, yeah for, I was just talking to a guy yesterday trying to convince him that Jerusalem is the center of the universe, but <laughs> Texas, and he's convinced Texas is the center of the universe. So. <laughs> <laughs> and he said everybody in Texas feels that way. So. Yeah, it's it's true. I'm not a, I'm not a native Texan, but... <laughs> I know what I know what they're talking about there. Yeah. All right. How's everyone? Well, how's everyone doing? Good. Good to good see you. Um. Sorry, I missed last week. Yeah. Yeah, we missed you. Where were you? I had a friend in town, and so just I didn't have time to. Oh, you could have learned Hebrew together. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know any, so it would have been a little. It would have been a little tough. Yeah, that would have been. Um, okay, so we want to examine the, the DNA of Torah. Last week, um, we were looking at a book. Uh, it's advertised on the Accordance site. It's a Hebrew dictionary. It's a hilarious description talking about how difficult Hebrew is. <laughs> but um, this is a, this is what we do is we try to get to the DNA of Torah. All right. Um, uh, Safta, you want to do the Shema? I don't see it. Wait. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, I'm sitting here looking at stuff and thinking you can see it. And all right, Kellen, what do I do? Oh, here we go. Oh. All right. How's that? <coughs> can see it. Ta da! <laughs> okay. Ready? We're ready. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod. Melchuto Leolam Vayed. All right, good. By the way, um, I haven't mentioned this for a long time, but I think this is a wrong translation. Blessed is the name. Um, well, what do you mean? I translated it right from the Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's the glorious name. Blessed is the glorious name. Uh, which is also the way it gets sung, you know. Um, Baruch Shem Kevod. Um, and, and usually the adjective is put after the noun, so Kevod Shem. But there's a resistance here in this translation to think that a name can be glorious. So anyway, something to think about. Kevod is glorious? Is that what that word is? Yeah, yeah. It, it can also mean weight yeah. and honor. And that's why I think C.S. Lewis has a book called The Weight of Glory. He's making a pun. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All right. Thinking, I was thinking about you all week, Zach, because um, <laughs> <laughs> I bought, um, so my wife allowed me to buy, <laughs> a, uh, to buy this. I made some extra money doing something, so I sprung for this. So one thing we were talking about Woo. One time, one thing we were talking about was um, how practical this is because we didn't know if it could slow it down like you can slow down Dan Beery. Right. Mm -hmm. But this comes in two forms. When you buy it, it, it comes in two forms as chapters and as verses. So, like, Kellen and I are working on Isaiah and. Oh, so there's, you know, Isaiah, and it has the name of the verse, and, whoops, 
and the little icon for a speaker. Yeah. If you press the verse, it'll, it puts the uh, verse up on the screen. Cool. And I'm going to play this now. What I've found is that even though you, you can't slow it down, it's it is native speakers and they're like actors. So it's very different from Dan Beery, um, which is good. It's good to hear different Hebrew speakers and for your, for your development of your hearing Hebrew. But it, uh, it sounds the nice thing, even though you can't slow down, you can replay it over and over very easily because it's all tagged by verse. Right. מי האמין לשמועתנו? וזרוע אדוני, על מי נגלת? Yeah, so, anyway. So we're liking it. So can you slow it down or not? No. You can't. I mean, that's fine for me. Yeah. Does it go with the accordant software? Yes, it's right in. It's just like picking one of the... One of the books, like BHS or something, you pick the verses. So you can't have, as far as I can tell, you can't have BHS up at the same time, which, you know, it'd be nice if you could, but, um, well, actually, not to check, I'll have to look at that. Maybe you can. But also they have the New Testament. Now, the New Testament is the um, Israeli Bible Society, uh, which is basically a Christian organization, of course. And it's all modern Hebrew. So the Old Testament audio, that follows the, you know, the Masoretic text, the BHS. Mm -hmm. This one, the New Testament audio, is a modern Hebrew translation. Um, I don't have it yet, but I'm probably going to get it. And so, so you just went into Accordance and found this particular uh, component and... Um, so yeah, I went to. Uh, in fact, if you if you go to uh, the Accordance site and you click on their magnifying glass mm -hmm. and put in Hebrew, this will be about the 19th or 20th listing under Hebrew. Okay. And then in this description, there's a click. There's a link to even click to the New Testament. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Just something to think about. What? Uh, what does it do? Uh, Android. Oh, I'm sure it would. Yeah, I'm sure it would. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't get Mimi copy. Right. I tried, um, but I couldn't get it. Yeah. But now there's probably something else you can use besides Mimi copy if you want to slow down Dan Beery. But accordance has always been every platform. Every every accordance works on everything, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. Who wants to brave this and explain how two Hebrew words get translated into seven English words. I did it last time. Uh, no, I did it last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll do it. Um, but by the way, um, I have I remember it though. Yeah, um, I uh, I can send this out if anyone wants it. I can put it out on chat. All right. So lo tina sheni, lo is no. Uh, nasha is to forget. So basically, right off the bat, it means not forget. But t is second masculine plural. And uh, I'm sorry, second masculine singular. And because it's a prefix, it's imperfect. So you will not be forgotten. And then um, also the T, the, the Hirk vowel, is an indicator that it's Nifal, mm -hmm. which is um, passive. So it's not, you will not forget, but you will not be forgotten. It's passive. And then the end, the me, makes it me. So altogether, you will not be forgotten by me. And here's the, the breakdown right here. 
so you will not be forgotten by me. I think the record I've seen is one Hebrew word translating into eight English words, but I don't remember where that is. Are there are there other examples of um, seven for seven? Uh, yes. Um, yes, this is not the only one. Um, Kellen does one. We have a video of how to read Hebrew on the Torah in my heart website. And Kellen spells one out. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it has to do with the sword. Okay. So here's our chart. And there's meatball right here. All right. Now today we're going to look at um, Balak. And <clears throat> Zach, you have accordance? I don't have accordance. Okay. Accordance is free if you want to get it. it's uh, You get your basic thing for free. And it comes with a... ESV with Strong's for free, which is nice. Oh, uh, I didn't know it was free. Yeah. When do you start yeah. paying money for the audio? I pay for the audio, and I pay this this uh, BHS is one hundred and ten dollars because every word in Tanakh is got the grammar all spelled out, so it's it's worth it. <laughs> it's a it's a lot of work they went to, and it's one hundred and ten dollars. But the basic accordance with several things, including a ESV of Strong's is free. And um, now I can actually go to my, the seminary that's five minutes from my house. I can go there and use their software. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. They told me that. I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I wonder if they have the audio. Yeah. Yeah. They might, they, maybe they do, or you can convince them to get it. <laughs> yeah. So, so you can start bringing your coffee and pastry and head over there and have breakfast there every day. Right. Now, <laughs> they might kick me out eventually. The second verse of our Torah portion is verse 3, and it says that Moab is afraid of, um, of Israel. And the word it uses is uh, vayakats. So I want to show you guys how it works with the BHS um, and I know you have BHS. Right. Um, all right. So if you hold down on a, on a word, it will give you this. Um, it will give you a screen that says search or amplify. So I'd already kick, clicked on search. Once you click on search, it gives you three options. I actually don't know how to say that word. Lexem or lexemi. Inflected mm. and root. Um, now, Actually, there's a fourth option, but I'll just talk about these three. All right. Now, root is um, the actual root of the word, and that's going to include a lot of things that you wouldn't expect. So I clicked on root, and the very first hit is thorns. So this is the curse after the sin in the garden. Mm. Thorns is coats. And that's from the same root as abhor or loathe or detest or be terrified, be in dread. All right. Then Rebecca said to Isaac, I loathe my life because of the Hittite women. And the third occurrence is when the Israelites are in Egypt and the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel. Um, by the way, uh, out. David Foreman talks about this. And when the Egyptians were in dread, or when they loathed, they loathed the Israelites. It's a setting up for extermination. If you can, and it also says they they multiplied, you know, they and the word for multiplied, it's uh it has the same swarm, they swarmed. It's and so that it's like Egypt is looking at them like insects or pests and that's what societies do when they want to start wiping somebody out they start referring to them as uh, non-human so um yeah so there's the first three occurrences of the root coats mm -hmm. in in uh in tanakh 
Now, if um, if you were to click on Lexamine, mm -hmm. then you would get you wouldn't get thorns because that's not the same idea as load. So Lexamine, it's like the same concept. Okay. And in that case, you would get the one about Rebecca would be the first hit, and then the second one would be the Egyptians. Okay. If you click on Inflected, that's exactly how it's used right here, via cuts. And this is the only occurrence in Torah that where Coates is inflected like this. So you'd only get one hit in Torah. Mm. And the next one is in Joshua. Okay, so that's how that works. Hmm? Judges. <clears throat> it's in Judges. <laughs> Kellen's my producer. He keeps me on track. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So also in this Torah portion today, we have the Ma Tovu, the synagogue prayer. Mm -hmm. um, it's based on Numbers chapter 24, verse 5. And you guys know uh, Bilam's, was, Bilam was hired to curse. Mm -hmm. Blessed, 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 and really ticked off the lock. But then he... Followed that up with a screw up and he died. So, um, but here's verse 24, verse 5, uh, chapter 24, verse 5. Um, since we're not going to get to this verse today, who would like to read yeah. it right now? I can, I can read it. Go ahead. Okay. Ma tovu ohalecha. Ohalecha Yaakov Mish Mish Ken No Techa Israel. Good. Yes. Go ahead and translate. Okay. Ma is how, right. Okay. How good. Um, I guess lo lovely is an interesting translation there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, how good are your are your tents, uh, or Jacob, your encampments of Israel? Good. And that's typical of uh, Hebrew poetry is to repeat the idea. I haven't seen that word encampments. Oh, hell is it? Oh, encampments. Yeah. 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 Mishkan. Uh, the way I finally remembered that root is if if you ever sing that song in congregation they, they sing uh shakanti be yerushalayim i live in i live in jerusalem <laughs> and so uh yeah that's how i finally and then a mishkan <laughs> makes it a a noun it makes the verb shakan into a noun mishkan mm. the tabernacle and then here it's the encampments now if you go to uh TorahInMyHeart.com, the videos page, and scroll down. There's a Ma Tovu by Debbie Friedman. One reason why I mention this is, um, for some reason, this is going to become the number one video on our entire YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I mean, right now, my son getting tased is ahead by about 500 hits. But... Uh, <laughs> But Debbie Friedman singing Ma Tovu is, is coming up fast. I think it's I've heard it before. A thousand hits. What's that? I think I've heard the song before. Yeah, it's beautiful. Now, there's another one by uh, right next to this. In, in my list on Torah My Heart videos, there's another one, Ma Tovu by Danny. Danny. Anyway, I can't remember his name. Danny. But, yeah, he's it's it's great, too. And I, I can't decide which one I like best, but... YouTube viewers are picking Debbie Friedman. Okay. <laughs> so, and it has it all spelled out so you can follow along the song. And all the verses are from scripture. Okay. Now we will go to our Torah portion. So, um, Zach, how did it go this week with reading what what did you read mm, i've been i've been pretty bad with hebrew over the last few two weeks 
So this is a good pick me up. I spent an hour this morning looking at it. Okay. Okay. Great. So, How but, about and yeah. Yeah, I spent um, yesterday evening um, taking a look at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I read in a book one time when I was in college, it was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. <laughs> and he says, if you spend an hour a day doing something, you'll be an expert on that subject in five years. Uh, I know for a fact he's exaggerating because I've, <laughs> I've been doing Hebrew at least two hours a day for the last seven years and I don't consider myself an expert it's too too difficult of a subject to be but but anyway it's hard it's yeah hard. and then there's a homeschooling curriculum of family uh, called the Robinsons and uh, Robinsons homeschool you can find them online the reason they're so significant is because he and his wife were scientists and they wanted their children to be scientists. Um, his wife developed a K through 12 curriculum for the kids, taught the first five, first four how to read, and then she died. And he didn't do any schooling. He just monitored them. The four kids taught the fifth how to read and one thing he and his wife wanted the kids to do is to uh, be scientists and problem solvers. So they started each day with two hours of problem solving. He said, if you spend two hours a day studying something, your brain will work on it 24 hours a day, even when you're sleeping. Um, and so that's what they wanted their kids to be scientists and problem solvers. Their their oldest son, when he turned 16, he got accepted into Stanford. And uh, the math professor there had collected 100 of the most difficult math problems. And his students would solve a few of them over the course of the year. This 16-year-old solved all 100 the first year. And there's never been a student that had done that before. Wow. So, um, so that's why I started studying two hours a day. It's because of the Robinson homeschool thing. <laughs> and actually, I do dream. Uh, I dream about Hebrew. Uh, <laughs> Are you retired? Yeah. Are you retired, Peter? I am. I am. Well, I retired, but I got another full-time job. So. Okay. I. Uh, when I was. I was a deputy. I have no idea what that was. Um, just go make sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that was, guys. Okay. So, um, I did have a job. I was a deputy on a sleepy island. So, actually, for one year, I was able to read for four hours a day. <laughs> but, but, um, but, yeah, now I've got a different job also actually lends itself to study. So, right, I'm not working, the, doing something all day that I have to, yeah, I can study. So it makes it easier. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I, I, I dream uh, conjugation and I dream Isaiah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Who wants to do, let's see, uh, Zach did Matovu. Anne, you want to do verse two? Okay. Um, Vayar Balach ben Zippor et Hol Asher Asa Israel La Emre. Okay. Okay. Uh, and he saw Bella, uh, son of Zippor, all that uh, made or did Israel uh, to the Amorites. Good, right. 
Um, so can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Good. Um, Balak, um, it, you can see, oh, here, let me move this out of the way. Um, so Balak, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it doesn't say it here, uh, but Balak means devastator. To, Balak is to empty out or to lay waste. Okay. His name means devastator. It's an onomatopoeia. And I, I tried to find out where I learned this years ago, and I couldn't find it. But you know how if you take a bottle of uh, water and you and you pour it out, it goes block, block, block. <laughs> so that's what his name is. It's an onomatopoeia for lay, devastate. Yeah. And then he's the son of a bird. Sipor is bird. <laughs> Little baby bird. Little bird, yeah. <laughs> Devastator, son of little bird. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go to verse three. Susan, can you read verse three? Okay. Va Yagor Moab Mipne Haam Meod. Ki Ravhu Baya Kots Moab Mipne Bene Israel. Um, and Moab, huh? Which translation is closest? Can you read? Can you see yellow right now? In great dread or exceedingly afraid? Well, gar is usually fear. Yeah. Um, My Bible says be afraid, be afraid of. I would go with Young's on that, but because of the mayod, you know, great fear could be kind of called dread. So I think they're both okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Moab is exceedingly afraid of the presence of the people, for it is numerous. And Moab is vexed by the presence of the sons of Israel. Yeah, and there's that word, um, vayakots. You see, uh, and Danny Bengigi, it's a good example of where Danny Bengigi helps us. He's got the Vayakots, even though it's the Kamats vowel. It looks like Vayakots. Mm. So it's Kots. Um, the root is Kots. Kuf, Vav. Here, maybe I can show you here. Uh, uh, Kuf, Vav, Sadi is the root. So, mm -hmm. um, now, like Susan was saying, uh, God, or, and that's also the root for stranger. Um, and oftentimes you're afraid of strangers. I think that's the connection there. Uh, Gare means stranger, or it can also mean sojourner. Um, yeah, and then Moab, Mipne, Zach or Ann. What does, uh, what does Mipne mean? Uh, from before or from the face of? Right, the face of, and it's a construct chain. Uh, Plural masculine construct chain like Bene Yisrael, mm -hmm. Mipne Ha'am, because face is almost always rendered faces plural. Okay, so the from before the faces of the people. All right, all right, Kellen, verse four. Maybe the long verse. <laughs> <laughs> this is the longest one. <clears throat> Vayomer Moab el Zikne Midian Ata Yelaha Ho Hakahal et Kol Sevi Votenu Kilho Hashor et Yerek Hasade Uvalak Ben Sipor Melech Le Moab Baet Hahi. And he spoke Moab to the elders of Midian. Now they have licked up the assembly. 
all our surroundings as it licks up the ox, the greenery of the field. And Balak was this, and Balak the son of Tsipur was the king of Moab at that time. All right, good job. Yeah. Zikne Midian, another masculine plural construct. What's what's a ta uh, homophone with? You know, homophone is sounds the same but means something different. Like in English, uh, if you bow down or the bow of a tree, they sound the same but they mean different things. What is it? Uh, is it you? You yeah, and now? Yeah, a ta. Yeah. yeah. Or bow of a boat, right? Over oh, yeah, yeah, bow of a boat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But how is you spelled? Uh, with an aleph. Yeah, so uh, it's, instead of an ion, it's a left. Uh, yeah. Um, call savivo tenu. Savav is to surround. So by making it into a, um, a noun, it's all our surroundings. I think one of the last two portions, you're like supposed to sprinkle the blood round about the altar. The base of the altar, right. Um, Saviv ha mizbeach, yeah. Yerek, uh, yerok is green, and so yerek, you you like grass or herbs, green stuff. Um, Basically right. anything an ox will be. Yeah. All right. Verse five. I'll do this. Vayishlach malachim el bi'am. Ben Beor Petora Asher Al Hanahar Eretz Bene Amo Likro Lo Limor Hine Am Yatsa Mimitzraim Hine Kisa et Ein Haaretz Behu Yoshel Mimuli. So, and he sent messengers to Bil'am, son of Beor, Petor. Petor is the name of the place there. What do you think that hay on the end is? Is it a directional hay? Directional yeah. hay, yeah. Um, which is on the river of the land of the children of Ammon to uh, meet him saying, behold, a people has gone out from Egypt. Behold, it covers the, this is literally the eye, the eye, uh, it covers the eye of the land. Uh, or this, you know, the, basically, I guess everything you can see, uh, the surface of the land or the face. Oh, yeah, here it says face. What does uh, Young say? The eye of the land is what Young says. But it face is good because um, when you're talking about the face, you can say pane or panim, panim, but you can also say the eye, uh, the nose, or the mouth. And sometimes those all get translated face. Uh, usually when it's the nose, it's talking about anger because you know, like, yeah, here, show them, Kelly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And, um, yeah, like people flare their nostrils when they're angry. And, uh, and, and lots of times it talks about God's anger, the anger of his nostrils or his nose. Um, and then the mouth and the eye, yeah, different ways of saying face. Okay. So the face of the earth. And he um, lives up opposite me. Mool, mool is opposite. All right, Zach. Verse six. Verse six. <laughs> All right. Vata lecha na ara li et haam haze ki ats um hu mimeni ula ulai. 
Uchal, Uchal, or is it Uchol? Uchal. Well, that's a good question. Um, uh, let's see. Uchal. Oh, according to Danny. <laughs> Uchal. Okay. Uchal. Um, nache, 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 bo, vaana, resh, shen, resh, shenu. Min haaretz ki yad yada ti et asher ti tiva rech mevorech mevora ech wait mevorach okay mevorach ba asher taor you are Good. Any uh, any pronunciation mistakes there? Oh, uh, only one I caught was right here on Va Agar Shenu. Ah. Read it as a noon. Um, oh. There's a you know there's a word for this. There's there's the Dalit Raish confusion because they look so similar, and there's the Gimel Noon confusion because they look so similar. Um, and there's actually some words in Torah which uh, they'll correct it because they'll put it off to the side because they think that it was supposed to be the other letter. And it, they're very easy. I still do it sometimes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to have to translate this one with, a, with, some, uh, with some help. Sure. Um, come now, therefore... This is uh, my Kumash translation. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Free adventure, I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom thou blessed is blessed, and whom thou cursest is cursed. Yes. Wait, go back up. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. It says Ve'atalecha na, which is please, but both the ESV and Young say now. Yeah, and Zach said, "I pray thee." Is that what what yours said? Yeah. Mine says, "Come now, therefore I pray thee." Yeah. Yeah. So I would agree with the Chumash. Uh, I don't think "na" means now. I think we've talked about that before. Yeah. I think it means yeah. So I, I like the Chumash translation there better. Wait, oh no, the Young's literal says that crazy. Oh, you're right, you're right. Yeah, Young's yeah, does okay. say that. Crazy. <laughs> so ESV is wrong. ESV. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask uh, earlier, but my mic wasn't working. So your seven, your seven years of Hebrew study for two hours a day, sounds yeah. like a lot of work, right? Yeah, it's. <laughs> um, I tore my hair out learning Hebrew. <laughs> And I'm not really exaggerating. <laughs> I just, I guess, um, if you could, like, what, what makes it worth it to you? Oh, at the uh, end of the, at the end of the day, like, I guess that's the, a simple question, but I'm, I'm not saying I'm losing motivation, but I'm at, I'm at a point where it's like, you know, I feel like I'm grinding through this, um, and I get like snippets of gold and benefit from it, but. I don't know what you would say about that. Yes. Um, for me, this is what I didn't have up on the screen when we started. Uh, but um, um, you can see it now, right? Uh, DNA. Mm -hmm. All right. So for me, uh, so I, I had memorized, did I ever tell you about memorizing the book of Hebrews? And then, all right. So I had to review it, you know, every week for, 15 years, so, or I'd lose it. And right. so I figured out one time, it came out to about a thousand repetitions. When one day somebody said to me, do you know what law is in um, the book of Jeremiah, what word it is? So the reason that's important is because um, I had a uh, high school shop teacher who talked about the importance of not letting sawdust build up because a furniture factory had let that happen. And one day a spark in the right spot, the whole place went up in a fireball chain reaction. Well, I've been studying, you know, 
quoting Hebrews for like 15 years. And in Hebrews 8, it says, this is the covenant I'll make with the house of Israel at times, says Lord, I'll put my law in their minds, write it on their hearts. You know, so I will put my law in their minds, right? I'll put my law in their minds, right? In their hearts. But I knew it was from Jeremiah, but Jeremiah said the same thing in English, right? Right. And then one day somebody said to me, do you know what that word is in Jeremiah? I said, no. And they said, it's Torah. And for me, it was like that furniture factory. My world blew up because like Martin Luther said, uh, he has a sermon, how should Christians regard Moses? And so if someone says to you, what does Moses say about this? Tell them, Moses is dead. His rule ended when Christ came. Moses has nothing to do with us. And so there's the founder of the Protestant Reformation saying, Torah doesn't matter. And yet in the very definition of the new covenant, Torah is to be written on our heart. So for me, that's what did it right there. I have like, oh my goodness, there it is right there. And people don't know because they don't know Hebrew in it. And then like that thing with nah. So, uh, but, you know, but just, just to challenge you a little bit yeah. with, with your answer, like that's elementary Hebrew. Like, right. <laughs> like that's like, you know, you could learn that even if you didn't know Hebrew, you could figure out that the word Torah. With a strong dictionary, right? Right. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, then you spend seven years learning Hebrew and are you at the point where you're reading it every day and it's just like a huge difference or, you know, what's like the, what makes the, the advanced, the advanced learning worth it. Does that make sense? Right. So for, so for me, um, that was kind of like the tip of the iceberg. And then like right. the first time I was reading Torah and it came to uh, Deuteronomy and I, I don't like saying this without a head covering, <laughs> but um and he says, Ani, Ani who? I don't know. I can't tell you, Zach, but I had read that so many times in English and it didn't mean anything. And when I read it in Hebrew and God is saying, I, I am he. And it just, it's like my whole body lit up. So for me, uh, and, and there's been a, I'm not going into all of it, but right. almost every time I read, I see something. It's like Danny Ben-Gigi, he said, there are mistakes on every page of the English translation. Sometimes four or five mistakes on every page. And um, you, and then like we were talking a couple weeks ago about Diba, you know, um, there's- Yeah, a whole, but you're, you're not even talking about the deliberate mistakes then right i mean, what do you mean well when there's a bias and they hedge it right well like the with this nah i mean that's a bias which which affects genesis 22 you know nah means please like like the humash and young's had it and esb has it as now because genesis 22 abraham's god says to abraham Take now is the way, you know, the way the King James does it. So Strong says, oh, not can mean now. And Danny's, he's like, it nah, meant, never means now. <laughs> nah means please. And, and, you know, it's not an issue if you're reading the English, but that changes the whole interaction between God and Abraham when he's telling him to sacrifice his son. And so for me, yes. Uh, and then, and then, at our previous congregation, I would talk to people about this, and people felt like they had been robbed by not having the Hebrews. So that's a, that's pretty much now. Now also, Zach, <laughs> another aspect of it for me is while the church has been disregarding Torah for about 2,000, well, 1,700 years, Jews have not been disregarding it. They've been studying it. And so now what's happening is in the Torah movement, you're getting people who now think they're smarter than anybody, uh, including Jews, and which to me seems 
um, very, I can't think of the right word. It's um, very arrogant. That's what I'm thinking. It's arrogant. And so, yeah, I want to go to Israel. We're, you know, Kellen, we're going to make our fourth trip with Kellen here this fall, God willing. Um, I want to get where they're coming from. And we, we've had interactions with Jewish people in Hebrew in Israel where if you, all right, I, do you ever, do you know anybody wears tzitzit? That what? Anybody wears the tassels? Any Christians that wear the tassels? No. Okay. Um, uh, I was asking a Jewish guy one time, uh, a Jewish rabbi, I asked him, what do you think about a Gentile wearing tzitzit? The, the tassels because it's a you know numbers 15 it's a commandment to wear them and he goes well well <laughs> and i said is it like impersonating an officer and he goes no not quite that but and then i said to him i've read torah in hebrew four times this was a you know years ago this conversation he goes oh oh okay <laughs> and so um <laughs> Um, if you read Torah in Hebrew, that to a Jewish person is, is, it seems to me it's the same thing as if you're in church and a Jewish person comes to church and says, I just accepted Jesus as my savior. It has the same effect on Jewish people because um, that is the basis of not only their civilization, but Western civilization is the Hebrew Torah. And if it's translated incorrectly, then we go off on a different set of train tracks. So I guess that's the best I can say. <laughs> Thanks, appreciate it. In answer I'll, to your question. <laughs> I'll have to read your book at some point and then have a chat with you about it. Yeah. About general theology. Yeah. On your view. Yeah. yeah. So, um, um, you ever watch that movie, I, Robot? Um, maybe. There's a lot of robot-titled movies. <laughs> it's the one <laughs> with the, um, the robot who helps Will Simon solve a murder. And um, it, they find out that the, uh, that the brain is going to take over the world with robots. And, and the this particular robot was made specifically by his creator to uh, be him. What this robot has to do is it has to reach in and get this little vial of uh, um, well, give me venom or something that's going to kill the computer. <laughs> by the way, it's Will Smith. Thank uh, you, Will Smith. Yes, I've seen that one. Okay. So remember when he's got to go get that little vial and it's inside a... Um, like a laser safe, which melts everything. He says, but this is why my creator gave me this special alloy hand. And he reaches in, he goes, mm, he pulls the thing out, you know? Um, so he's the only one that can do that. Well, I, I don't feel I'm the only one, but, but the, the Hebrew thing that of Torah has kind of made me impervious to um, I've had thousands of conversations and for me that did it there it is right there in the definition so so yeah for me it's a foundational thing um, the Hebrew and I understand that it doesn't work for everybody that way but it is the DNA of the Bible and Western civilization so there you go. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sorry for the long question. No, that's okay. Um, I'm glad you asked it. And yeah. Okay, I think we've got time for a couple more verses. Let's see. Now, um, that was Zach, so it's Ann now. Thanks. Kellen. <laughs>
Okay, Vayelchu Zikne Moav Vazikne Midian Uk Samim Bayadam Vayavou El Bilam Vaydab Hu Elav Divre Valak. Yeah, and your pronunciation has been getting a lot better. I, I can tell you're working at it. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, I, uh, um, and the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian. Um, Don't forget this word right here. Departed? Is that the word for departed? I'm trying to... Uh, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's really halach to go, but yeah, they... And see what's... Okay. what's okay. Yeah, see, Young says go. They did go. <laughs> the elders <laughs> of Midian go. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, Bayadam. Um, Bayadam. Uh, is that... Yad. Yad. Uh, I know, to know, but... but. No, this Yad. Oh, hand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, in their hands and and uh, they went unto Balaam and uh, is it spoke to him unto them divrei um, what uh, I'm trying not to look isn't that terrible? <laughs> 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 uh, uh, what what ba Balak said, I think. Is. Yeah, the words of Balak. Um, <laughs> yeah, and see this uh, this one right here, Vayavou. Yeah. And um, uh, they came. Yeah. Yeah, they came. Yeah. Um, that's another example where this uh, King James will sometimes translate that as go. Mm -hmm. And it, like for example, Zach in your Chumash. Uh -huh. Exodus chapter 10, verse 1 is the beginning of Torah portion, Bo. And I think the Chumash is the only English translation that where God says to Moses, come to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Every other translation says, go to Pharaoh. Because Bo means come. <laughs> and, yeah, um, but when Young say come... Young, well, I don't know about Young's. I, I think Young says go also, but uh, yeah. how can that make sense to come to Pharaoh? Well, think about it. Uh, so uh, that's a good question. Okay, so this is I uh, thought about that. All right. Oh, so, I know. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> well, it it has to do with who did the bidding, isn't it? I I think it if has you to do with come where... to somebody, or if you go to somebody, it, it depends on whose decision to do it. Hmm. Okay, I, I thought of it as where God is. Like, if God is with Moses, it makes sense to say, go to Pharaoh. If God is with Pharaoh, it makes sense to say, come to Pharaoh. Um, yeah. Hmm. Best I can do. <laughs> 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 yeah, but the Chumash is the only one that has that is come every. I think I don't even think Young has that is come. Um, all right, that's good. Thanks, Anne. Oh, it's time to move on to by popular demand. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> by the demand of the students in the class. We are now not doing um, oh, Adon Olam, but we are doing the Avinu. Have, right. you heard of, have you heard of the Hebrew version of Matthew? Have you looked into that at all? This is from the Hebrew version of Matthew. Ah. 
because this is, in fact, do you know uh, Nehemiah Gordon then? I can't yes. imagine. Yes. Okay. This is his website. Uh, so if you go to a prayerdoorfather.com and you click on media and then audio, you get learn the prayer in Hebrew and you get this. So yeah, I, I prefer this one, this version. Yeah, I like okay. it. Um, Anne did this last time. Um, do you know this, Zach? Do you know this prayer? Or you want no, to I'm, I'm, I've actually never read it before. Okay, I'll do it. Um, or Kellen, you do it. I can read. I can read the first couple lines at least. Okay, go, you go ahead as far yeah. as you want, then Kellen will. All right, Kellen, we'll play. We'll do a relay race here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Av Avinu, uh, sh uh, shib shabash maim, uh, it kadesh shimcha veit barech. Mal Malach Utech. Mal or maybe it's Mal Mal Hut Ha. Good. Mal Hut Ha. Okay. All right, go ahead, Kellen. A Ratzon Ha Yihye Asui Bashamayim Uva Aret. Vetitem Lachmenu Temidit Umechol Lanu. Hatotenu Kasher Anachnu Mohalim Lachotim Lanu Veal Tevienu Ide Nisayon Vesham Reinu Mikol Hara Amen. Want to take a turns translating now? <laughs> uh. <laughs> I have the English memorized, so I basically would be just cheating. Okay. Um, <laughs> go ahead and cheat. <laughs> uh, well, it's definitely our father and Shemaim, um, uh, in heaven, right? Right. Um, but I don't understand the, the sheen before in. Uh, oh, uh, why is it Sheb? Why is who? it Shebash? Yeah. Oh, who okay. Or which. Uh, oh, which. interesting. Yeah. I've never seen that like that before. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I have your, I see your name. So it's Kadesh must be hallowed. Yes. Yes. Um, it's Palel. Yit Kadesh. Yit Palel form. Yeah. Uh, um, something about a kingdom coming, but I, oh, there's Melech. Okay. Mm -hmm. Malach, Malachu, yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read this every day this week, and I'll read it for you guys next week. Good. All right. Let's That'll leave be it. my goal. Yeah, let's leave it with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there it is right there. If you want to take a screenshot or a prayer to our father com. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, do you, have you read his book, The Greek Jesus versus the Hebrew Yeshua? Is that what you're talking No, about? I've just watched some of his lectures online and was curious of his standpoint on a few things at one point. Yeah. All right. So now, next week is Torah portion, Pinchas. Um, Which has nothing to do with Pinchas. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's the next one that where he does the, the dramatic stuff. Yeah. So starting with Numbers chapter 25, verse 10. So thanks, everybody. Good seeing you. Hang in there. Yeah. Now, I, do. <laughs> I hope you find your own internal motivation for, um, for Hebrew. I, I do. And mine's different than yours, which I thought was interesting. Go ahead. What is yours? Uh, for me, it just, you know, in the Psalms 19, it's, you know, how I delight in your law. It's my study, like, all the day, every day, you know. And learning Hebrew just makes reading the scriptures more fun and more of a delight. And I think at the end of the day, I will be reading and studying the Bible more in the long term. 
if I learn the Hebrew because it'll just be more exciting and fun. Cool. That's good. Also, also, you didn't really mention the poetry aspect of the scriptures, which really gets lost in English, especially the Psalms and the Proverbs. Right. And so to see poetic, to see the poetry of the scripture definitely gives um, just new beauty and um uh, again, like a delight in reading. And obviously there's translation things too, but for me, those don't matter quite as much. I mean, they're, they're cool, I guess, but that would be like my reasoning. Yeah, that's good. Hey, while we're here, Anne, what's your reasoning? Um, a little bit of both of what I've heard from you and from uh, Zach, um, but it, it brings uh, a, a better understanding of, of the word. And I feel like it draws me closer to him because I understand better what his word actually says. So I feel like it draws me closer to him to understand. And at the same time, there are uh, inaccuracies in some of the translations. And if I have uh, an understanding of the Hebrew itself, it, it opens that up. You can see that. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, it, it sounds to me like my motivation is a combination of what I hear both Peter and, and Zach saying, you know, it's, um, for me, it, it's, it's a way of drawing closer to him. Understand? All right. So drawing closer and then a combination, Zach, would you say uh, delight and poetry yeah i mean with the proverbs i've read the proverbs like hundreds of times and it wasn't until i started learning hebrew that you can really get a better understanding of them yeah. you really need to know hebrew to get more because there's only there's such limited words in proverbs that you really have to understand the hebrew to actually get deeper with it yeah. and you don't get oh. any of the um the uh, puns and you know no. yeah right. all of that comes out whenever you know the hebrew and right, not right. There. Pro and proverbs is great because the way that it's written um, helps you memorize it better and so my hope is long term i'm going to be able to memorize scripture faster if i know it in hebrew than in english mm -hmm. because the way that the the sentences are constructed um like certain words are reversed of each other and they go next to each other so that um, they connect two different ideas. And that just makes it really easy to remember the proverb. That's as well as the phonetics. Yeah. It's all like when you read the proverbs, there's so much like puns going on and um, word plays and it just helps these proverbs just stick in your mind so much. Uh, oh, interesting. Uh, Susan, what about you? Um, obviously I don't have a lot of motivation. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are an honest group. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have enough that I, I think it, I just find it intimidating. I know enough to, to realize just how hard it is. And so it's hard to push through. Yeah. What I but find I, is, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I, I just find it, it, it really fascinating. Uh, I don't like the idea that I can't trust just reading the Bible and I know that's what it is. It bothers me that to find out there's a bias as to chosen words. Mm -hmm. So I, I am intrigued with the idea of seeing what it really says. Mm, good. How about, right, how about Hebrew have you memorized, um, Peter? Oh, Section. memorized? Yeah. Oh, Hebrew. Um, well, we, we memorized Isaiah 62 last year to be able to quote it to people in Israel. And we found that some Israelis do not understand biblical Hebrew. <laughs> I found that out the hard way. But that's why yeah a woman at our hotel i quoted to her and the whole time i'm quoting it to her she goes amen amen like <laughs> um, 
So some people are really connected. Uh, right now we're working on Isaiah 53. Otherwise, let's see. I don't have a lot of Hebrew memorized. Yeah. Common verse in Torah. Do I own there? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, of course, <laughs> Jeremiah 30, yeah, Jeremiah 31. And, and, and some of my motivational verses, like, um, so I, I've got a good chunk of Jeremiah 31. Um, One thing, if you memorize something in English, later in life, you might like a different translation better, and you got to memorize it again. Oh, yeah, see that? But you do it in Hebrew, you're good. Once and done. In 2,000 years, right? Yeah, you're once and done. <laughs> It's kind of fun once you get something memorized in Hebrew. Like I was working on Psalms one. That's like that's it. You know, there's no more to. You got it. You know. And how does Psalm one affect your view of Torah? It hasn't yet because I can't really translate super well yet. But I can say it, and eventually. I will. I will be able to meditate on it even more deeply. But yeah. I think. My, as a beginner, you can memorize Hebrew, not know what it means, and it's almost like a treasure chest that you put somewhere, and eventually you'll get the key to unlock it, and you'll have it. That's a really, that's kind of like people that uh, do that with money, and they're so smart, you know, and when, when they're 60s, they have millions of dollars. Um, only what you're doing is more important by far. <laughs> It's cool. It does help you um, when you memorize. It helps you learn more obscure words, memorize more obscure words. In sure, yeah. sure, yeah, yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, all right. Oh, and my favorite, by the way, is uh, Isaiah chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Vehaya, veacharit hayamim nachon yihye harab beit Adonai berosh hararim benisa migvaot benaharu elav kol hagarim Nice. That's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank See you later. See you yeah, next week. For sharing what's important and everything. That was good. Appreciate it. Later. All right, bye guys. Bye. Alrighty, bye bye.